Inside number nine St. James's Street, John Lobb has been discreetly making some of the world's best and most exclusive bespoke shoes for the better part of almost two centuries. The firm's incredible history all began with boot making, a tradition they continue to this day. In today's video, I have the opportunity to visit with fifth generation family member William Lobb to review some of their incredible samples of traditional English boots. Uh, William, Hello, Kevin. Uh, it's so nice, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I can't tell you how great it is to be back here in London, and uh, what an honor to be back, of course, here at John Lobb. Well, it's good to have you back. Yeah, well, it's been a long time, uh, but one of the things that um, I love so much about coming in here, of course, is just the air of history. I mean, you can almost smell it whenever you walk in the door. And uh, one of the things that I think that, for me, has always been a place that I've gravitated to first of course, are these incredible cabinets. I mean, it's such a testament to Lobb's rich history, and not just in shoemaking, but in bootmaking, which is really today even more rare than maybe it once was. Yeah. So I was hoping that in today's video, you know, you could maybe walk us through uh, some of these really mm. exceptionally interesting samples, uh, talk a little bit about their history, uh, how they were used, uh, and then maybe share with us a little bit from your perspective as a shoemaker and mm -hmm. bootmaker uh, how they're made uh, and kind of how they're made differently than a, uh, perhaps a pair of shoes. Yeah, so well, I mean, traditionally, John Lobbs, when it started, that boots was really, that was what everybody wore. I mean, in the beginning, I think of the Duke of Wellington, right, who in mm -hmm. some ways really modernized the boot uh, as part of day wear. Um, you know, a boot really did differentiate uh, a certain social class standing uh, because it meant that you were riding horses. Yeah, and the Wellington boot, that was uh, a, a very significant uh, step regarding their footwear and, 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 and it was really a classic kind of boot that was really brought into the forefront by the noble classes at the mm -hmm. time. In fact, the, 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 a very good uh, thing to note about boots yes. is that, that when we started we, we received our first royal warrant from the Prince of Wales because he, he was given a pair of um, riding boots presented in a fine wooden box. But Lobbs, I mean, really had a very rich history uh, making boots, and they might mm -hmm. be less common today than they were yeah. 30, 40, 50 years ago, but it's yeah. so much a cornerstone of the firm's history. Yeah. Uh, and it's such a unique uh, a craft because there's very few people today that still have the knowledge and skills left to make riding boots. Yeah, and if you look at some of the old pictures of the, of the, of the storefront in the window, you'll see like lots of boots arranged in the window. Well, there's just as many different models of boots as there are shoes. And so, you know, again, as we look through the cabinets, of, of course, whenever I walk mm -hmm. in, one of the things that I'm always struck by is, uh, you know, there's so many different models and most of them I'm totally unfamiliar with. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, maybe pulling a few out and kind of talking about you know, what yeah. they are and what they would so, have been used for. So here we have um, <clears throat> the classic uh, riding boot, plain riding boot. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, the amount of work that goes into a boot like this has yeah. to eclipse even that of a bespoke shoe. I can yeah, only I imagine. So the boots have always been, you know, a slightly more complicated uh, thing to make. And uh, when you take the measures of the customer, you, you take the top, the top measure, the, the calf measure, the ankle measure is not so important, important on riding because it has to go through, he has to get his foot, his, his foot in, so you take the heel measure uh, and obviously the, the, the usual measures you take for his feet. Yeah, um, because it has, the foot has to be able to fit in, but since there's no laces, yeah. it still has to be snug once it's... Yeah, so that's it. You have to have it just, just the right measure to, to, to enable him, enough to, to enable him to get his, his, his foot in. And so uh, talk to me a little bit about just some of the things that differentiate because, I mean, if you were to look at it from just here, it looks like it could be a shoe, a hole cut, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's uh, a lot that goes into making this, uh, I mean, it has a sturdiness to it mm. to help protect the rider, am I correct? Yeah, so generally with a riding boot, what you have is um, that the front is always, you, you, you block it, I mean, like a, a hole cut shoe yeah. as well, but... Well, like, a, like a Chelsea boot or something. But it, it had, the front has to be um, blocked, which by, by what I mean by that is it's shaped so you can get this curve. The leather is wetted and, and it's shaped on a, on a block and then it's dried into that shape, so it keeps that shape. And um, so 
in a in a in a, 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 um, a riding boot, usually you would have a, a German seat. This is getting a bit technical, but <laughs> you have a you have a split lift in there, mm -hmm. uh, which um, helps to level up at the, the base of the heel, uh, and and that is 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 sewn into the to the upper and the inner sole, really? and, okay. and and that um, that prevents the heel from pulling off. Okay. Whereas on a shoe, you don't need that because it's uh, yeah. it's yeah, not yeah, getting that same strain, yeah, and, and by the stirrup and all yeah. that kind of thing. So, so that that's a, that's an important part of the. Uh, so the insole would be, you know. It's fully welted, right? Yeah. You have the insole, yeah. right? You have the welt, mm. but then you're saying right here, this first layer, the top lift is sewn in. Yeah, also. that's right. Yeah. The, well, yeah, the, the split lift. Split lift, yeah. Um, sewn in, yeah, and then the heel is built up. The, the riding boot will have the straight uh, breast there because it's obviously going into the stirrup, mm -hmm. so so you don't want to curve, mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's slightly slanted that way, so you so your your boot is kind of tending to. To, to sit uh, slightly angled mm -hmm. in the well, in the in the, uh, yeah, in the stirrup, yeah. stirrup. Yeah. but and, and the leather is all the best quality leather, so it's it's made to, to last. So that is a riding boot, a plain riding boot. It's quite a simple um, design, but it's quite a simple design, but, uh, but it kind of understates the amount of yeah. work that goes into the making, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So um, the variation of, of a riding boot, you have like the, the field boot. This is a, a Navicut field boot. What's a Navicut? So, so that means that uh, in the same way as the shoes, you have the Navicut shoes, you have the Navicut boots. Uh, and it's to do with the, um, the facings, the way that they're stitched on, on top of the vamp here. Okay, so kind of like a Darby? Yeah, yeah. yeah Darby. Okay. Yeah, that's the same thing. Um, because you can have an Oxford field boot as well, um, so that, that what, meaning that the um, the facings go underneath mm -hmm. the uh, the vamp as opposed yeah, to on top. On top. Like, this gives it slightly more um, of an opening than the than the Oxford, mm -hmm. so a bit more of a. Yeah. And this would be, you know, used for riding also. Like I mean, I guess yeah, so it's just a bit more um, of a, a casual kind of boot. Um, not not quite so formal, I mm -hmm. guess, and, and and often used for walking around as well. Yeah. It gives a bit more, you know, you can get tight around the ankle a bit more, so you can get a little bit more um, grip. Uh, okay. So you can actually walk around with a bit more ease mm -hmm. in that boot than you could with. With, yeah, the, with the heel, and I mean, the heel looks much larger than the riding boot. I mean, is that am I correct well, in that no, observation? No, that just happens to be that way on that boot. Mm -hmm. But but essentially, it's the same same construction as the as the riding boot. Yeah. In that respect. Yeah. And then talk to me about the two kind of pieces right here. I mean, this. What is this? I mean, this heel portion is totally yeah. separate. So this is the, the counter, and, and this is the, the vamp. And this is uh, traditionally a flat seam. Um, it's quite a clever little seam. It's sort of disguised, so you can't see the stitching inside. Um, and that's, that's done on, 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 on the, but yeah, that's, that, that's what that is called. And that's just where the vamp and then the heel counter is all mm. connected. Just a nice way of joining them together. Yeah. Okay. Would something like this be waterproof? I mean, because again, you're kind of walking out in the fields, I mean. Yeah, I mean, relatively, as you know, it's never going to be like a, a rubber boot. Yes, of course. You know, but it's it's reasonably waterproof. But yeah. it's it's not going to be. They're not necessarily made to be Smerged. waterproof as such. They're just made to to be a comfortable boot that you can wear when you're riding and walking. Um, but it really, I mean, there was a certain exposure to elements with the boot that you might not necessarily yeah, get of with course. the city yeah, shoes. Yeah, but then it's generally made with us. I mean, this is, I suppose. Um, you know, you tend to make them with a slightly heavier leather and, and a heavy sole, so it's, it, it's a durable, it's made with more durable yeah. leathers. Again, stricken by just how many different styles and models of boots there are. This is quite uh, um, popular because it's actually very good for, for, for also for walking around. Not so many people really? ride. So uh, would this be back in the what is this called? Well, everybody was riding. They didn't have cars. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but but uh, so so yeah, we have still have people, quite a few customers ordering the, the, this this particular boot. Um, what well, would it be? Just kind of like a country walking boot. Yeah, a heavy walking boot. Would I you mean, shoot it, in this? Yeah, yeah, shooting. That, that's uh, you know I. I 
I, I have been shooting with a customer that wears these boots and he loves them. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this is the Greeny boot. It was previously used almost exclusively by the Royal Artillery uh, and it was made for many other regiments when war broke up in 1939. Uh, the, the three straps, um, they fold over a, a bellows tongue um, and the bellows tongue helps to keep it uh, waterproof. And so for a boot like this, I mean, you've got a last that you're using, you know, for the bottom part of the shoe. Yeah. But then what about, I mean, how does, how's all this? Is that part of the last also? So the leg of the boot is all, um, it's closed all in um, two dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, usually what one would need to do is um, block it uh, once the boot is made on, on, a, on a tree to get the shape. Um, so the trees are really an integral part of the actual boot making process. Yeah, I mean we sometimes make them without the trees, but and, and but we generally would would probably have to get a find a tree to fit to to, yeah. to actually block the leg into yeah. shape. So you would make the trees, you know, you know, really along with the last. So when we make a pair of long boots like this, what we do is we uh, we make it with the with the back strap unstitched. Okay. We then um, try try the boot on the customer and and and. and so that we can make sure that, 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 that it's all fitting correctly in the leg. Once we're happy that uh, the leg is going to fit well, then we will stitch up this, uh, this back strap here. Okay. Because um, that gives us the possibility then of, of actually... Let it out or let it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then um, once that's done, we, we then can uh, block the, uh, the, the leg on, on, the, on the boot tree to, to give it that final shape and mm -hmm. give, it, give it that final decent uh, yeah. fitting to, to, the, to the leg. And is the leather being stretched? I mean, does it have to be tight over the boot tree in order to really kind of take yeah, that shape? Yeah, generally you you sort of allow about a quarter of an inch um, to, to, uh, to 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 for the leather to stretch mm -hmm. on the tree. Yeah, that's yeah, fascinating. It's a yeah. Beautiful pair of boots. Um, I need one of those for my country estate. <laughs> exactly. That I don't have yet. <laughs> um, so um, moving on, we have the. Uh, the infamous Wellington boot. This was um, designed. Do you want to hold that? Yeah, please. Mm. Wow, it's an honor. <laughs> this was uh, actually uh, designed by the Duke of Wellington. There was a, a great bootmaker called um, Hobie the Great. He actually had a shop um, just down the road from here in St James Street, uh, and. Um, we have the original prototype uh, Wellington boot. Uh, in fact, we acquired it. A um, miniature, right? Uh, the little yeah. miniature one, mm -hmm. uh, which um, was used, um, Hobie made and sent to the Duke Wellington in the field. And he approved the design. And, and it, was a, it was a very popular boot at the time because obviously because the Duke of Wellington had so much success, everybody, you know, people wanted to emulate him. And, and, and one way of doing that was to, was to, to, to get yeah. uh, a pair of the boots that he... Well, made. he really was a style, yeah. a kind of icon yeah. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And immensely popular, of course, after winning mm -hmm. uh, the Battle of Waterloo and saving Britain from Napoleon's hand. Yeah. So what is it that's really different about this boot that really distinguished it from the time? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's clearly not as tall. Yeah, so actually, um, it's, well, it's generally 12 inches high for a, for the, uh, for a military boot usually 10 inches for a naval um, Wellington boot. Um, the, uh, the, the, this is designed uh, very much along the same lines as a riding boot. It's got the same, uh, the, the same tongue at the front here um, and the same, uh, uh, well, it's slightly different seam actually, but we'll get the, the same kind of counter at the back. Mm -hmm. the, th the distinguishing thing about this is really the, the fact that it's got these two seams that come up the sides here like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the fact that it's a, it's a shorter boot, and it, so it, uh, it was obviously I think it was used um, often by the uh, military for um, as, as a boot to relax uh, in in the, in, yeah. in the evening. Kind of at the end yeah. of the day. Yes, and it was it was shorter, so it was easy to get on and off. On and off. Yeah, as opposed to a riding boot, yeah. which is more tighter fitting, and like like uh, we've said, it needs the, the yeah. a lot of work to. to and we were at Apsley House a while ago, and I remember speaking. Uh, with someone there that, you know, the Duke of Wellington, you know, still rode his horse to work, you know, even at the age, young age of like 80. Yeah. And he was always uh, spotted, of course, wearing a pair of Wellington boots. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> and so you'll still make these. I mean, that's... Yeah, we still make these. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. There's, I mean, you know, you can't just walk into even your average shoemaker and find someone that has the knowledge of how to make proper no. boots. I mean, it really is no, a very, very rare. rare skill. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've managed to keep that uh, that tradition alive, yeah. which is uh, you know, Lab is like you know the custodian of uh, <laughs> so much of shoemaking. Yeah, um, that's exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what about this one right here, the one with the linen? Uh, on the top. Yeah, so this is a, like a canvas uh, leg. Canvas, yes. um, so this is what we call a briar boot. Essentially, um, it's good for like shooting or really? walking around. And it's got a Norwegian, is this a Norwegian welt? Yeah, that, that's a Norwegian welt there, so it um, helps to uh, prevent the, the water from getting into the boot. Mm. Um, and this is all kind of sort of got a bit of a waterproof backing yeah. in it to help to. Uh, Protect it from the from the from the from the water as well. Um, yeah, it's a, it's another nice uh, nicely designed boot, easy to take on and off, la laces to to help to, to secure mm -hmm. onto the onto the, around the ankle and everything. So. And this would be something that a customer, you know, kind of today might purchase for shooting or going on walks in the yeah. in the briar. To be honest, the briar boots is not, not so frequently wanted mm -hmm. these days, but it's. Uh, it certainly is an, uh, um, um, it's, a, it's a really nice looking boot. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. So heavy with the last in it. I mean, the, the, this is a, the, this the is a true solid block of wood. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you could have one a bit lighter probably. So and you guys make... This is all solid, isn't it? You can, you can hollow it out and make it a bit lighter. Yeah, well, there's something to it being solid, <laughs> you know. It's quite a statement, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, um, I'm not they, beyond they, statements. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might want something, you know, that's a little bit less uh, um, sort of exotic looking, perhaps. Um, but it's it's very much um, how, what the customer, yeah. what, what, you know, they, they, everybody, you know, they, yeah. they have their own desires, and, and you can you can wear all, many different types of boots for yeah. for hunting, yeah. um, really. That's history. This really is. Well, I mean, literally. I mean, there's <laughs> so much of it here; it's overwhelming. And does this kind of history, I mean, is it informing kind of your more maybe modern interpretations of this? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose people did wear long boots, didn't they? Mostly for, uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then as, as, as the roads improved yes. and, and, and the... Um, and people moved into the city. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and they managed to start tarmacking things and things got like, life got generally a bit easier. They didn't have to walk in all the muck and mm -hmm. filth in the street. Mm -hmm. Then they could go down to for having lo boots. lower boots. Yeah. So, so then... Well, and the automobile, of course, played such a big yeah, role in kind of transitioning away from this because, yeah. you know, before every gentleman, you know, would be riding a horse or would have yeah, at least exactly. been in a carriage or something, but more often than not probably riding a horse. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas, you know, in the so. kind of mid 20th century, everyone was riding in, in cars, automobiles. Yeah, so that's how it's just gravitated yeah. from, from everybody being outside and wearing long boots to, yeah. to wearing very casual kind of... But you still make, I mean, bespoke casual boots too, right? Yeah, like we Chukas do. and Chelsea. Yeah, so, so we've, uh, yeah, I can show you some, um, like, lower, more ankle boots yeah. that, 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 that are more popular yeah. in, in this day and age. Yeah, yeah. that would be interesting. <laughs> okay. Wow, look at these samples. So this is quite a little bit of a juxtaposition. I mean, we have what are very clearly kind of archival pieces uh, right next to something that, you know, like a Jodhpur like this, I could be wearing today. Yeah, um, so this is, uh, maybe if I start off with Please, this yeah. one, this is, a, this is a really popular style actually, the, lace, the, the strap Jodhpur, um, uh, it's essentially can be used as, a, as the name yeah. um, uh, um, suggests, it's, uh, it's uh, could be quite often it's used for um, for wearing when riding. Obviously, this one often it's not, but but it can be, and that's mm -hmm. where it's uh, that's where I think it originated from. Was it was a boot that could be uh, used for both uh, for, for riding. Kind of predates the Chelsea boot, you know, something that's comfortable, yeah. right, easy to get on and off, yeah, exactly. but still is a proper yeah. boot. Yeah, so it's a really nice, uh, really nice style. And um, this is a this is a, one, a variation of of the strap jodhpur, um, essentially, um, probably um, partly designed because uh, it's very very difficult to block um, 
that large piece of uh, crocodile, if, if, if possible at all, really. To, so you, so that, that's one way of, 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 um, of creating the, the boot without, without... So you don't have to... Because um, th th this, this, this boot, in order to construct this boot, uh, you have to um, stretch this over a block and, mm -hmm. and, and wet it, and, and so it's all nice and smooth. Yeah. Um, whereas the crocodile Isn't is not so easy, to, not so yeah. flexible. So um, it's called that's a, basically a single strap, fixed strap mm -hmm. jodhpa boot. We call that one. Yeah. Proper Chelsea boot. Uh, yeah, that's uh, um, with an unusual tree actually. That uh, is quite a nice little design, isn't it? We don't really do that anymore, but it's... Yeah. And one of the things that, again, that's interesting about Lab is, I mean, you make all of your own shoe trees in-house. Yeah, that's I right. I mean, not here, but off-site, mm. but, you know, it's still all done, yeah, all done under the name and under the Yeah, we, we have our own craftsmen um, employed by us, and, and, and they've trained for years learning to make the, 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 the trees, um, to, uh, and they, they're all individually made to fit, for, fit the boots and, 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 and fit the shoes. Mm -hmm. So it's a real nice uh, skill. To yeah. have, yeah. Well, the shoe tree is so important. And, and uh, yeah, very important. Keep to help prolong the life of the of the boot and the yeah. shoe. And this is just a proper city boot. I mean, yeah, yeah this Chelsea can be boot. worn like uh, as a smart. You know, you could wear it as a, in a bit as in a, in a business meeting, couldn't you? Or, or you could just wear it uh, with a pair of jeans. It's nice. Yeah, and then this. Talk a little so about this that. one is um, just a a, 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 yeah, like a monk. Uh, um, Hilo, Hilo hi design that that is with the curved facing. The, there's a lace jodhpur which we haven't got here, which which comes to the uh, a point, and and the Hilo which which is curved round like that. As mm -hmm. and you get the Hilo shoe and you get the Hilo boot, and this is a kind of a monk version with a, with a, yeah. don't know I mean, and then right here, of course, we've got the double monk strap, which your grandfather William Lobb invented. That's I right. mean, this is an iconic shoe. It's epitomous, and it originated here in the shop. Yeah. Um, well, actually, yeah, I think maybe next door. But when my grandfather was working in Paris, I think actually oh, really? he uh, he um, in the Paris shop he worked there for uh, quite a number of years, and um, he was he, he worked out this uh, this style with, with a, when he was dealing with a particular customer yeah. over there. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's uh, and you can almost see the evolution of like the boots. I mean, we started with the riding boots, and then kind of as things became. You know, call it more casual, but the boots became shorter and shorter mm -hmm. and shorter. And then here we are. I mean, we've got the buckles that are elevated, that are integrated in the Jetpur. Mm -hmm. You have them right here in the double monk. Yeah, and 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 the, and the various uh, buckled, uh, like the the, the monk uh, yeah. um, little booty. Yeah. And and uh, uh, yeah, this was a this was a, a double strap monk which was made um, recently just to kind of highlight. Uh, um, the uh, the style really and, mm -hmm. and, and, and just giving a slight variation with a little patch mm -hmm. there just to to give it a little bit of a difference. It's <laughs> uh, a beautiful shoe tree. Look yeah. At the shoe tree. My goodness. So they, you can get these shoe trees made um, and and we, what we call brass and engraved. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a nice little feature. You can have your your name put on there. And we usually put the John Lobb uh, name on there. John Lobb bootmaker and then and then your name can be put on there if you like. This has a pink liner. Yeah. Of course, you know. <laughs> You know, everything can be done bespoke here, and so this is a pair of bespoke uh, matching boot bags. Nice. With, uh, with my, your bags. my grandfather's name, no, my name now, but it's got his dates there, so all yeah. links in with, uh, with when, it was, uh, when it was created. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about this loafer right here. So this uh, is very unique. I, I've never seen this before. It kind of reminds me of a butterfly loafer, mm. but much it, more elegant. Yeah, it's different. It's, uh, it's actually designed by my great uncle. Who was chairman uh, for many years, and he helped to. Can I take the shoe tree out? Yeah, sure. He helped to uh, take the company from uh, the difficult times uh, after the Second World War. I mean, um, look at this again. Up to, up to uh, when he died. Shoe uh, tree. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a nice light, uh, a light, uh, lightweight shoe tree that's been. Wow, and look at the hollowed. look at the arch here. Yeah, so it's uh, got a high. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Arch. A turned up, turned yeah. up in a sort, so to give a bit yeah. more support in the arch. Wow. So there's the little features that you can add to your shoes to, to give you that extra support if you need it. Um, but yeah, he, he, he did a, that's, that's something that my uncle created. Yeah, this, nice. is some, this is something I could see having made. I mean, it's really a beautiful, absolutely beautiful shoe. Um, what about these? So these are some really interesting samples. 
Um, some boots, of course. I mean, this, I mean, this right here, I mean, clearly a lady's boot. I mean, it's got to have a 30 pound shoe tree in it, solid wood. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, you know, Karl Lagerfeller could have designed something list like this and gone down his runway, and you would have mm -hmm. you would have thought that this is, you know, part of the current runway fashion season. Well, every now and then we've had. Uh, um, uh, it's not a very rare somebody wants that, 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 but that's a that's a thigh length ladies lace boot with a high heel. It's uh, can't imagine when they would wear it, but. Uh, <laughs> But it certainly uh, it shows you what, 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 what we can, can do. do, yeah. What we still can do. Yeah, and you were saying earlier that this is still on your price list. It is still on our price <laughs> list, yeah. I, I'm just waiting for somebody to order it, but it's yes. taking, taking a number of years. But yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it would be fun to measure it for. Um, what about these other boots right here? I mean, this... So this is a hobnail boot. It's a classic um, sort of military-style um, Navicut derby boot with a cap with the uh, um, like grained leather. It's, it's all like really solid and, and hard wearing for, yeah. and that, that hobs in there to... to and do these screw in or are they... Uh, they're just actually hammered, hammered in. in. Yeah, I mean wow. it's pretty rare these days to use those. Most people, um, they, they, a lot of the time that they want to, to us, we can make them with rubber soles and like commando soles, things like yeah. that. That's, uh, this was a pre-commando sole yeah, I mean, traction. Yeah, I mean, we can still do it, and we still have the hobs available. Um, but most of the time, people find, I suppose, it's, it's, they, they, they're, they're a bit limited because you know you don't, you can't walk everywhere in them. At least if you have We're a pair of rubber. Certainly not inside. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't <laughs> want to ruin your floors. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what about these? So these are. Um, so this uh, is a is an old model of a. It's, a, it's, a, it's called a Hessian boot. That's how boots. There used to be many boots made like in that fashion. Um, um, probably uh, sort of, I don't know, back in the, back in the early nineteenth century. Early nineteenth century. I mean, look at the the heel. I mean, it's a very yeah. kind of delicate. Yeah. Very sculpted heel. Wow. German, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, I, I guess it's original. It look at these, I mean, look at the stitching here. I mean, that's a high mm -hmm. stitch density on the outsole. Yeah. I mean, incredible craftsmanship. Yeah, it's very nicely done. It's, uh, it's We don't do those anymore. No, we, do, we don't really have the... Uh, yeah. And what about this one really right here? Wow. That is just an old uh, riding boot. You can see it's been well used. Uh, it's got these um, patches added to the... Uh, so we, uh, one of the great things is with with our boots, you know, they may be expensive, but what you, they, they will last f f f you know, forever, really. And you, you can just patch them uh, like this has got patches yeah. here and patches here. And this and is keep waxed calfskin. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, wax calf. So this is the uh, the reverse side of, of a calfskin that is uh, then um, boned. Uh, it's the flesh side, so it's 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 kind of rough, but then you can bone it smooth yeah. and, and fill it with blacking. And, and it, so it gives a smooth, nice, clean, smooth surface, but it, it helps if, if you rub it against uh, the, 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 the branches of a tree it's or, not or something. Scuff. It, it, it will scuff, but then you can just bone, bone out the scuff. So that's the great thing about that. About, about when do you reckon something like this was made? I mean, is there any way to guess? I mean, certainly probably not this century or the last one. Um, no, I'm not saying that's that, not that old, is it? I mean, you don't I, think so? No, I mean, this is probably... Uh, where are we now? So, uh, 2021. I, 19, I don't know, I'm guessing it would probably be 1970, maybe. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not so old. Oh, well. <laughs> Quite rare, though. <laughs> and these are the boot tabs, right, that you were talking about earlier? You, yeah, you yeah, the, the tugs that we the tugs. Um, that you put the boot hooks in to pull it on, yeah. And then There's this right here. Like these are oh. the boot hooks, it might be wow. good. So you would use those. Okay, so you wouldn't use your fingers, you'd use proper yeah. boot hooks. So these, you can show on here, they just go in here, like that. And you've got the other one there, that goes in there. And then you can easily just uh, tug it on. <laughs> and then you Good have luck to pull it off. off. <laughs> yeah. So talk to me about this boot right here. Is this another riding boot? So this is a riding boot, but this has um, got the, the mahogany top. Okay. So that's for um, when, when you're hunting, you, the, the, in particular hunts, you have a particular colored top that's uh, so is like appropriate. So like hunting or? Yeah, although 
obviously they're not you know, doing that anymore, but, but they're doing a, a sort of uh, version of it. And, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 I think they still, they, we, we don't do it very often, but they still have these, uh, these tops. It's, uh, it's, uh, Would these be removable? Um, not really. No, no they're, they're stitched on, but okay. I mean, you could change it. I said you can easily change yeah, but it. But you wouldn't but, like. But it's there. You know, you, you, that would be meant could. to be there to God. stay. Still can't get over just the heft of weight. <laughs> I mean, the craftsmanship and the work here is just. Yeah, you can see like this superb. is wax calf, but it's so nice and smooth, isn't it? And and shiny. So. Yeah. I wouldn't know the first thing about taking care of waxed calf. Yeah, no, it's uh, and that that would have taken a, you know a good lot of work, but once you've got it to that, then you you can just maintain it. It's a really lovely, lovely thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. You got the uh, the spur rest here. That's something. Uh, so that's where the where the spur will rest on on there if you're wearing spurs. And would there be a box here like a? Sp uh, well, that's for like. Um, I think primarily it's a ceremonial okay. thing where they, where they have the, the spur that, that uh, has a prong on it and fits into the heel, into a spur box that's fitted into the heel. Um, but um, quite often the spurs are strapped on with straps and, uh, yeah, okay. and then they, they, they rest on, on here. Hmm. Yeah, so different types of spurs, but yeah. Amazing, incredible, wow. Um, what about this right here? So that is a, um, a boot tree. I think it's come out of this boot, actually. So you can see that it's clearly been, uh, um, the boot has been stretched, I guess, over time, and, and, and they've just added this, uh, added this to, 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 yeah, um, to, to give him a bit more room mm. in the calf. So it's one way of, uh, instead of making the whole tree again, you can, you can actually just add, yeah. add some leather on there, and, uh, and it's, uh, yeah helps to uh, when, when, you, when you need to make an yeah. adjustment like that. Any kind of parting or final thoughts on boots? I mean, you know, whenever you think back of your long career, mm -hmm. you know, where do, I mean, boots play a role in that, just as you kind of reflect back? Um, I mean, hmm. do you think much about them, or I mean, do you enjoy making them because you don't <laughs> see them often? I mean, yeah, I certainly, in, in, it's nice to, to be able to make them. I, I suppose every time somebody orders a pair of boots, it's... Uh, kind of a special it, occasion, it, I would imagine. Yeah, it's, I mean, well, I mean, the, the ankle boots we do lots of. The long boots are not so often, so it's, we, it's really nice for us as craftsmen to be able to, um, to, to have the opportunity to, 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 to work on them. Whenever anybody orders a pair of, of the long boots, it's, uh, it's, uh, if you want to make a statement, if you want to, if, and if you want something that's going to stand out, um, then they're, they're, and also something that's just just really well crafted and well made. It's it's it's, a, yeah. it's something that uh, well, I would I would suggest yeah. you you think about. Again, every single time I come in here, I'm in such awe. And I think what is really truly unique and special about British craft uh, is that someone can still walk in these doors today and have a pair of shoes made, you know, at John Mob. You know, the way that they've been made uh, for the better part of almost two centuries, mm. and that craftsmanship that tradition, that history uh, is still accessible today and it's still here uh, within these walls. So it's really mm, Thank it's you very really much, Kirby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, been a pleasure to be able to, to tell you all, uh, all about our wonderful boots. Oh, and shoes. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you.